Hey, BC here for BC Nephro. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to talk about kidney function, specifically creatinine, cystatin C, and GFR. For more information, check out bcnephro.com. A link will be in the description below. So let's get into it. What do we mean when we're talking about kidney function? What we mean is this. How well are the kidneys filtering the blood? And this is measured, determined by something called glomerular filtration rate, GFR for short. So GFR is how many milliliters of blood the kidney filters in the glomeruli each minute. This is what we mean when we're talking about kidney function and how well the kidneys are cleaning the blood. A direct measurement of glomerular filtration rate is labor intensive and it would not be practical to do on a day-to-day -day routine basis. So we have other estimates of kidney function. Traditionally, the main test to estimate kidney function is a blood test called creatinine. So why is this? So creatinine is a substance that is normally produced by the body in a relatively constant manner from day to day, and it is eliminated by the kidneys. Creatinine is produced by muscle and mainly eliminated by glomerular filtration rate, so this has become a marker of kidney function. However, there are two reasons for the creatinine to be higher. One is the body is producing more, the other is that the kidneys are excreting less. So cre since creatinine is produced by muscle, there are estimating equations that have been developed that take this in into account for a particular patient using their age and sex. The eGFR or the estimated GFR which is reported on the lab. Given this, in specific situations, the estimated GFR based on the creatinine may not represent the true GFR for a given patient. If a patient's muscle mass is not typical for someone their age or sex, the estimated GFR may be inaccurate. So a person who is frail and emaciated, a person with liver disease, a person who is paraplegic or has had amputations will have less creatinine generation than a typical person their age. Likewise, there may be some people with more muscle mass or having another condition such as myositis or rhabdomyolysis where there's increased creatinine generation. Another situation where creatinine may not be an accurate reflection of GFR is when the tubular secretion of creatinine is impaired. Creatinine is mainly eliminated by the kidneys by glomerular filtration but about 10% is eliminated by tubular secretion. Certain medications that can impair tubular secretion and can worsen the creatinine without truly affecting kidney function without changing the GFR. Some common medications are trimethoprim, cimetidine, integrase inhibitors, some anti-cancer therapies, PARP inhibitors, or tyrosine kinase inhibitors. You may come across a situation where, based on the patient's clinical status, based on the patient's medications, or just based on the absence of any other evidence of kidney disease, that the GFR based on the creatinine doesn't make sense. So what else can you do to try to determine the true GFR? There's two things you can do. The first thing is there is another blood test called cystatin C. So cystatin C is a substance that is made by all nucleated cells, is not dependent on muscle mass. It is made in a relatively constant manner and it is eliminated by glomerular filtration. So there also is an estimating equation based on cystatin C to estimate GFR. Now cystatin C may be better in that it's not dependent on muscle mass, but it's not perfect itself. It can be affected by other factors. There are factors that can raise cystatin C independent of the glomerular filtration rate. And some of these factors include things like hyperthyroidism, diabetes, obesity, or smoking, hypothyroidism can cause the cystatin C to be lower. However, in a situation where the estimated GFR based on the creatinine doesn't make sense, um, this is an alternative. There are estimated equations using the patient's creatinine as well as using the cystatin C, and there's a combined equation using both the creatinine and cystatin C. This combined equation likely is the most accurate in representing the true GFR in general. A link to the GFR calculator using these 
will be in the description below. There's another thing that can be done to assess kidney function when you believe the, creat the serum creatinine is not a true reflection based on a discrepancy in muscle mass from a typical person, and that is a 24-hour urine for creatinine clearance. So in general, if the serum creatinine is stable, the amount of creatinine produced in a 24-hour period will be eliminated in the urine. So that can be measured. So the 24-hour urine for creatinine is measured. The concentration of creatinine in the urine times the volume of urine divided by the serum creatinine, changing those units from a 24-hour period to a milliliters per minute will give you a creatinine clearance, which, which is a rough estimate of kidney function, rough estimate of GFR. The creatinine clearance will tend to overestimate kidney function a little bit because some of the creatinine that made it into the urine came from tubular secretion and not from glomerular filtration. One other important thing to remember is that these estimated GFR equations are only accurate if the patient is in steady state. If the serum creatinine is rising, then the estimated GFR in the lab report will be an underestimate of the true GFR kidney function. If the serum creatinine is decreasing, it will overestimate the true kidney function. So only really take it into consideration when the serum creatinine is stable in steady state. So that's it. Assessment of kidney function, creatinine, cystatin C, and glomerular filtration rate. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, hit like, subscribe, and let your friends know. And until next time.